Greetings and salutations. Welcome back to Colin and Greg Live right here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. My name is Colin Moriarty. This isn't Greg Miller at all. This <laughs> nope. isn't Greg Miller at all. This is Alexa Ray Korea from GameSpot. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Alexa, thank you for joining us. Always. A lot of people are really excited that you're here today. Oh yeah? Yeah. Aww, we were getting a lot of nice heart. messages on, on, on Twitter and here in the chat. People are people are stoked that you're here. Aww. A different kind of maybe quieter version of Greg. Uh, not quite as uh, rambunctious, <laughs> perhaps. Um, so, uh, we really do appreciate your time, uh, yeah. and uh, we hope that you have a good time with us here today. Uh, real quick. Yes. Your last name. Yeah. I want to just talk about it just for a moment. Korea is how it's pronounced. And I yes. thought, in, in, my mind, in my mind's eye, because you know, we've been talking, you know, I've known you for a while, and we you know, talk on Twitter, and we see each other in person every once in a while, but I never heard you say your last name. Korea, in my mind, was how it was always pronounced. Mm -hmm. And I would have never guessed in a million years that it's Korea, but I am... I am cognizant of the problem of the last name pronunciation since no one can say my last name. And like, <laughs> telemarketers or people from a doctor's office butchering my last name. So I'm glad I asked because yes, it is a little I bit offensive. I appreciate it. Um, Nick, is, is, is everything okay? Oh, well, this has a big error message in it over here. Why does it have no! a big error message in it? I don't think it's supposed to be there. So I'm just going to hit the lead and see what happens. What's no? the error? No. What, uh, what do the comments say? Are the comments good? The comments are okay. The help. comments are good. <laughs> help. We need help. Greg is. Oh my God. Oh my God, Greg. Okay. <laughs> Where are the, uh, I'm, I'm looking for technical comments here. There we go. What oh, happened? Is it gone? Uh, just, it was an, an extra thing that was there. I, I liked it there. I think we should have kept it there. We can, I can go right put back. Put things so over it. I can put like a, there we go. All right. <laughs> should be good now. All right. So, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Nick. And come back and help us fix things that are broken. I'll be watching. Uh, zero, yeah, so uh, Hibber77 says zero, zero, zero days. Well, we, as you see, we have our, our kind of funny days without technical issues sign back here, which is always perpetually at zero because we can never <laughs> do anything right. Uh, Alexa, before we get into everything, how uh, how do people know you? Because there's a lot of people out there that know you. You work at GameSpot now, but you have a little bit of a history in this industry. I do. So tell um, us a little bit about yourself, please. So I started working uh, late 2011. I was writing for um, blogs based out of New York for free, kind of getting my name out there, getting a byline. I freelanced for a few months that spring, and in May 2012, I joined Polygon. And last fall, I moved out here to join GameSpot. So I've been around for about three, three. Three and a half years, yeah. Cool, <laughs> cool. Well, welcome, and uh, you know we're excited to have you here. I, I, for people that are curious where Greg is, by the way, he's going to British Columbia right now to do a uh, uh, Mario sixty four amazing uh, charity event, um, and uh, we wish him the very best up there, and hope he raises a lot of money for a good cause. But he'll be back on Monday, um, and we can go a day without his loudness and and uh, his crazy. We can make it up, make up for it. I he's, can stand up and scream and it's, yell it's better, if you want right, me so. to. Yeah, it's, it's a little. Is it? Let's all, let's all call it spit. spit. <laughs> yeah, it's better. Yeah, it's, okay. a, it's all. Oh man, you're just you're just telling <laughs> it like it is. Uh, so uh, Alexa, there's there's a bit of news today. Yeah. Uh, not quite as crazy as it usually is, and there's some. Uh, Let's call more Vink pieces, things we can discuss a little later um, mm. as well, that I saw specifically at Kotaku. But I think we're going to start um, with what I feel is maybe the most important news of all, and that's uh, Danganronpa news. Yep. Uh, so let me go here to the web browser and see if it works. Oh my god, it does work. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I was at an NIS event yesterday uh, downtown in San Francisco. Uh, NIS usually comes here once a year and mm -hmm. shows off their new wares or whatever, and they talked about three different games that I think are important. Um, to PlayStation fans in particular, and then one, actually, so I guess two games for PlayStation fans, one game surprisingly for Nintendo fans. Um, yesterday, um, at the event, they announced that Disgaea 5 mm -hmm. will be coming in the fall to the West. Uh, they announced that they're bringing Danganronpa another episode, Ultra Despair Girls, which is a... Ultra Despair Girls! Terrible name. Uh, <laughs> it's a it's a spin-off game uh, for the Danganronpa series, so it is not Danganronpa 3. But it's Danganronpa, it which is, is, I think... The best. Exactly. And then this was the big surprise, I think, because NIS doesn't typically or really ever touch Nintendo games, yeah. is that they're bringing uh, Rodia the Sky Soldier over for, for Wii U and 3DS. Uh, so the story from your site uh, by, Zor <laughs> by Zorin Tay. Am I saying that name right? Zorin. Zorin, Zorin Tay. Shout out Zorin. Zorin Tay wrote uh, Danganronpa 5 to be PS4 exclusive, new Danganronpa confirmed for Western Vita release. Mm -hmm. And her story briefly reads, uh, NIS America has announced a slew of upcoming new games to be released in the West, including Disgaea 5, Alliance of Vengeance, exclusively for the PlayStation 4, Danganronpa, another episode, Ultra Despair Girls for PlayStation Vita, and Rodia the Sky Soldier for Wii U and 3DS. That's an odd... Uh, I'm 
for NAS, I think that's an odd choice. Yeah. I don't think they've brought anything to those consoles in a while. No, I, I, they, are typic they typically stay with PlayStation games. But what I think we're seeing with a lot of these companies, and, and you're an observer of Japanese games too, so I, I think you're going to have, have an insight into this as well, mm -hmm. is that you're seeing companies like Idea Factory and a few others kind of get in the space, like P this PC space, for instance, with the Hyper Dimension games. Oh, yeah. um, so I think that they're kind of just spreading out. I think NIS realizes that, even though their bread and butter is on PlayStation, that they can make money by serving the niche RPG audiences on these other platforms. And I think they saw, especially on 3DS with uh, Persona Q, which I think did really well for yeah. Alice. Um, so it's not a huge surprise, um, but uh, the drink menu when I went there, I tweeted it out last, the last night. They had a drink for each game and it kind of gave away that they were gonna announce that game. <laughs> what was the um, Danganronpa drink? Uh, let's see, let me see if I can, um, I'll, I'll see if I can bring up Instagram. Dot com. No, that's not what I want. And then yeah. we'll go to uh, kind of funny vids. We need more game theme. And drinks. then we'll go here and we'll take Ooh. a look at it. So the pretty bomb was for Disgaea. Apple and then uh, Monokuma's Madness was for uh, Hellfire Bitters. Have, and then Sky Soldier, of course, gave away that they were going to bring Rodi over. Yerba Mate infused vodka. I want that. Where do I get that? That sounds awesome. Uh, yeah, so this was like, and what's so funny is that, uh, uh, you know, our, our buddy Eric Kasher, who does follow the leader with us, was making fun of me because I, I tweeted this out, and he's like, oh, those delicious, those drinks look delicious, he'll just order an old-fashioned, of course, and I was like, <laughs> yes, I will. So, uh, so interesting news there, just for our PlayStation fans and our Wii U and 3DS fans, um, do you have an, 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 a particular affinity for Disgaea, by chance? Because Greg and I were talking about that last night, and that series doesn't do it for me at all. It doesn't. Every time a new Disgaea comes out, I think, all right, like, I'm going to love this Disgaea game because I've played them all. They're okay. But every time I play, like, I played Disgaea 4 and I was like, all right, this is an okay game. It's just, it's missing, I can't exactly quantify it, but it's missing something. It's missing that, like, oomph that you get from, like, Nino Kuni. Right, right. Uh, yeah, to me, it's like, I love Final Fantasy Tactics or Tactics mm. Ogre. Um, these kind of more, I don't want to say grounded because none of these games are gr necessarily grounded, but... Like, this guy's whole thing is, like, you do 900 million points of damage and you stand on top of each other and there's all these weird dynamics to the game. And what I really just want is a more straightforward turn-based strategy RPG. Yeah. It makes me just cringe when I think the last one I played of any consequence was Tactics Ogre, uh, Let Us Cling Together on PSP. which was Which was years ago now, so... Um, Where's our tactics too? Come on! I, I know, like, we got, we got <laughs> those two tactics games. I don't know how you felt about them. The, I guess it was... Tactics Advanced on GBA and then Tactics Advanced 2 on DS were mm -hmm. pretty good, but not, again, oh, not what we were looking for. No, not there at all. Um, Someday. So I don't know, what, where do I want to go next? Let's see, I want to go somewhere a little different here. Actually, IGN has this interesting news. This surprised me because I had no idea that this this series was this oh, popular. Oh my, uh, really? It says, uh, yeah, this uh, is by Jordan Siriani over at uh, IGN, and it says Mario Party series has sold almost 40 million copies. See, uh, I don't know if I believe that. I don't know how I feel about that either. Yeah, I, 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 like, look, the story says, since Mario Party's debut on Nintendo 64 in 1999, I remember it well, I remember that summer very well, the party game series has sold over 39.6 million copies. According mm. to a post on Nintendo's website, the figures as of December 2014 includes all of the Mario Party games in addition to Advance, DS, and Island Tour. Uh, Mario Party 10 is the next big Wii U release, I guess, after Kirby um, on <laughs> uh, March 20th. Um, so I just thought I'd throw that news out there. Uh, huh. Kind of, kind of bizarre news. Um, I don't think I don't think I've actually liked a Mario Party since the one on the GameCube. I don't know. I, I just think they haven't. They've been, they've been like relationship destroyers and kind of like far out there. I mean, some of their mini games are so arbitrary. Like you get five stars because the game feels like you need five stars and you're already in first place. It's very like, I don't know. I feel like the algorithms in the current ones are a little off. So. I mean, good to, good for you if you like Mario Party. Yeah, I and, I, and I also think that, you know, I remember, you know, the N64 days, I think we look at it a little bit with rose-tinted glasses. Like, mm -hmm. the N64 was really, I think, a pretty inferior machine to the PlayStation, but there were these games that would come out every so often, like Mario Party or Smash Brothers, where... And the Mario RPG. Yeah. The Mario RPG. Mar Mario, and then we had the Zelda's, we had some other games, but games that hit the party button really well with your friends when you were younger, like Goldeneye or something like that, where you can sit down and everyone can play together. And Mario Party, that first Mario Party game was really novel, I think, in that respect. Oh, yeah. was, I never really had played anything like that before, and, and uh, that was really special, but I think they've gone really quite overboard with the series. At this oh, point. yes, they've definitely gone quite overboard. Uh, I got to play part of a Mario Party 10 um, game at E3 last year, and it was it was like another variation of the like pulling the face to make it look like the face in the middle. You have to like stretch mm -hmm. it out. 
and it didn't really feel like anything anything new. So I don't know. We'll see. I'll be optimistic about Mario Party 10. Yeah, I mean, well, you got to keep an open mind about it. Uh, <laughs> now, I don't know because I want to kind of get into. I'm really curious about what, what you think about some of these things, like these kind of more think piece things. I think I'm going to go to them. Ooh, uh, I like this one. Yeah. So um, let me go back to the browser here so people can see. Uh, Jason Schreier, who again, I always, you know, I love Jason and I think he does great work. Um, really one of the great journalists, I think, doing real journalism in this I industry. Agree. Um, he wrote more of an op ed kind of piece. It's brief, but it's basically just a question um, about, and I'm kind of curious to your, ans your answer to this, Alexa. Um, <sighs> should Sony make another handheld, he asks. And he says, on Sunday, the Vita will officially turn three in North America. Happy birthday, Vita. Sony's ambitious PSP successor, which was which was originally envisioned as a way for people to play console-level PlayStation games on the go, was a commercial flop from the beginning, thanks to terrible AAA software support, overpriced memory cards, and all sorts of confused marketing. Though the system has become a must-have for anyone who's into indies and niche Japanese games, it just hasn't been able to make a splash in a market dominated by iPads and iPhones. Which raises the question, will Sony make another handheld, should they? Uh, we've sniffed around a bit, but if Sony's got plans to make a Vita successor, they're keeping it close to the chest. Smart Money might say they'll stick to the mobile market in their red-hot PlayStation 4, but you never know. Mm -hmm. um, so he opens up the question to his audience, and I'm kind of opening up the question uh, to our audience as well as you, Alexa. Do you think Sony will or should make a new handheld, whether it's Vita 2 or just another portable? Um, I mean, I have, and I know a lot of people that do enjoy using the PlayStation Vita to do remote play in their house. If there's multiple people in their household that maybe want to use the TV while they're playing. I think it's really useful. I use my remote play. Um, if they make another, if they make a Vita 2, yeah, okay. I think that they should make another handheld, but I think maybe this time they should make the screen a little bit bigger. Like if they're going to make it, I think maybe it needs to be a tad wider this way. Yeah. I, it, iPads, iPhones, tablets, stuff like that. Like giving, a think, a wider screen to play around with might improve some of the experiences. Maybe? Yeah, I think so too, and I think that you know, I, I well, like Greg and I have often said on Beyond, and I think that, I think it's, I still think it's true, is that I think Sony, if there's a company that's crazy enough to do it, it's Sony. It's Sony. You know, like I think that, I, you kind of wish you were flying the wall in Sony Japan. Like I think they thought Vita was going to do a lot better. I certainly did. I made a, a what is a notorious article to a lot of people about how Vita was going to be fine, um, <laughs> and uh, and actually killed the 3DS, which didn't end up happening, of course, um, but. I feel like they're, they feel like maybe they could have done it differently or better. And I think that, I do feel like there's a market there. I think it's shrinking. I think it's truncating. But we look at this, this unit, this beautiful unit here on, on, on the it's, screen. It's and, and it's, it's, let's bring the, the browser back up because I, I just. Look at it. it <laughs> it's sexy. It's yeah. sexier than the 3DS. I like that I can play Final Fantasy IX on a train with this machine. Yeah, it's awesome. Like, yeah. It's just a great machine. And I just don't feel like, I feel like Sony didn't do right by it. Um, mm -hmm. In the sense that I think the AAA support was there in the beginning, and those games sold well too. Uncharted sold over a million copies at retail um, for a much smaller install base than it has mm -hmm. now. And I would love to see them do something different. But I, I, I do wonder if you know they're speaking to a, a, a again a shrinking audience, and the money's just not there. I mean, even with 3DS sales, which are good, much softer than the DS sales. No. Um, so maybe maybe they're smart to get out of the market. Nonetheless, I think Vita is going to bang around for a while still. I think that. Um, its death spiral has begun quicker than PSP's, but as we <laughs> learned from PSP, a death spiral for a handheld can last literally five or six years. Um, oh, yeah. And PSP's death spiral is still going on because their game is still coming out. They just released a PSP game in North America like a month and a half oh, ago. Oh yeah, like Blade Renovant, Renovant Blade. Yeah, yeah, like exactly. yeah. Some yeah. every once in a while on it was PlayStation. An seed game. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, and they're doing. They they bring the games over, and I guess they have an audience um, or enough to make some money for a small company like yeah. that. Um, but I'm, I'm I'm interested to see um, the future of Vita and if they will, you know, they're crazy enough to do it. They really are, they're, they're, they're crazy enough to do it, Alex, I'm telling you. Yeah, no, I think if they make a new one, it'll be fine. I mean, it's a Persona 4 Golden and Danganronpa machine, like, what's not to like? Like, all of that only comes to that, so, only comes to that handheld, so I think it's definitely worth it for those experiences. And it was cool to be at an NIS event yesterday and see a company like that just continue to support the Vita, mm -hmm. you know, because they are making money on the Vita and, and you know, they're bringing over, um, Firefly Diaries, they're bringing over um, that that new game from the Demon Gaze um, developers about Tokyo. It's, it's like a dungeon crawling RPG. Um, you know, they're obviously bringing over another episode. Uh, this guy 5 will not be able to run on Vita, so I wouldn't expect it to be there. But um, <laughs> he actually said something really interesting. They were saying something interesting about this guy 5 that it was originally, I didn't know this, it was originally supposed to be a PS3 and PS4 title, which makes sense. That's what they're doing with Persona. Atlas is doing with Persona, yeah. for instance. But then they realized that the, the game they want to do can't run on PS3, and that was nice to hear. You know, yeah. that the J Japanese developers seem to be a little more complacent with the power of the PS3, and it's, yeah. it's nice to see a developer like that. 
want to push forward. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely feel like a lot of a lot more Western studios are trying to span both consoles, whereas the Japanese studios are more willing to just be like, nope, we're making Bloodborne just for PS4. We're making Deep Down just for PS4. Deep Down, weird, which just popped back into the news after like a year of being silent. Yeah, yeah, we, we talked about that yeah. yesterday, which was to totally weird. I think a lot of people thought it was in development hell. I certainly I forgot was about to... it. <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, I played it at TGS, I guess, two times ago that I was there, and I thought it was kind of stiff and... Uh, I also, the great thing about playing games in Japan is that you can't talk to, or I can't, I don't understand Japanese, so I can't talk to anyone, so I have no idea how to invert a controller, I have no idea like what they're saying to me when I, they're showing the game off, so I'm kind of just stumbling through it, so I didn't try to be too harsh on it, because I'm sure I was missing something um, in there as well. Uh, <laughs> Flaming Toast, by the way, gave us a tip, we appreciate that. You can find our, uh, the cool controller stickers that we tweet out sometimes at flamingtoast.com to cover your little light bar on your DualShock controller, a kind of funny logo, or a kind of funny games logo, all this kind of stuff, so props to them, and thanks for stopping by, guys. Um, I want to, this is a game you can speak about, this again. I saw this this morning, and it just hurt. Let's just, let's just do it. Mm. Uh, Brian mm. Ashcraft, uh, over at Kotaku, wrote a story, he said, Final Fantasy XV is 60% finished. And what he said was, well, we've waited this long, I guess we'll be waiting a little longer. In Final Fantasy XV demo tonight, Director Hajime Tabata was asked how much the game is currently finished. Tabata replied, we're now at 60%, in quotes. Oh. Last September, Tabata told Kotaku the game was 55% done. Honestly, I imagine the team has been busy getting the game's demo out the door. I actually... I believe that. Yeah, I, I went to an interview uh, with Mitch um, when we were in Tokyo and talked to him, and he, and he told us the 55% number too, um, which told me that the game was still much further out than I think people ex expected and anticipated. Um, we're not getting it this year. I firmly, firmly believe that this game will come out next year, and I think i mean it hurts to see that after like next year it will be 10 years since the e3 2006 announcement that this game was happening at all and it it's kind of sad like i was i was 18 years old when they announced this game and now i'm an adult with a career and i'm still salivating over it but i feel like i'm willing to wait the extra year for this game and trust them that like that they're taking their time because they don't want to rush it out the door because they want it to be good. Yeah. So I'm willing to sort of sit back and not be crazy about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I, I, under, <laughs> I understand that. I, I would rather them take their time, even if the time is getting a little ridiculous at this point. Yeah. You have to imagine. A little. The, you have to imagine the game has been reworked and, and it's not Final Fantasy 13 versus or whatever versus yeah. 13. Um, Hairstyles have changed. That, yep. And look at those. Look at that hair. Looks, That's looks old great. hair. But um, I don't know. I'm with you. I don't. I don't think that you know this. This not only has implications for this particular game, but also I think Kingdom Hearts three. Um, oh in terms God. of, like, people really think that Kingdom Hearts three is coming like in the next two years, and I'm like, there's no, no way on God's green earth that game's coming out until 2017, it maybe will even not come later. Out before this, it, it won't come out before this, and they just they just switched the engine last fall because there were, as I understand it, there were problems getting Luminous to run on the Xbox One hardware. There was some developer thing. Um, I mean, I believe that, but I think switching the whole engine over has probably set them back about a year, and so we're not going to see it until this one's out. Yeah, and it's 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 a shame because there is promise with this game. Brian wrote another. Uh, this is cool. I saw this. Brian wrote, yeah, he wrote another story here about Final Fantasy XV and how its combat works. Um, and he said last December, Kotaku reported on Final Fantasy XV's combat. At the time, details were somewhat abstract. Today we have detailed a list of how exactly the controls function. So this gives us a better look about mm -hmm. in, in terms of the actual gameplay, which I think is exciting because we don't. We saw that weird trailer with the car and all the, the kind of the, the, the driving around kind of thing. But so, uh, I mean, and this is kind of nerdy stuff. I mean, we're really like kind of grasping for straws about something to talk about with Final Fantasy XV at this point. But we know that movement, <laughs> camera controls rather, uh, are on the right stick, for instance. Walking. Is the left, left stick. stick. Okay, we get it. Run. Run. Left, left stick. stick. Jump. So you can jump. The B button and the X button, not surprising there. Uh, dashing, uh, left stick button, L3 button. So similar kind of thing. Clicking. You can automatically jump over things. Uh, cool. Attack during a battle scene, X and square. So, I don't know if you saw, did you see that a bunch of people recorded and put it on YouTube, the presentation in which they showed all of this off? And the way that some sometimes when the characters are moving, like when they're running, it looks really good. It's definitely a big improvement from, remember Final Fantasy X, Titus kind of slow running mm. everywhere he went. And when they're running, they look great. But when they back up or when they move sideways, it looks very, like, awkward. Like, their movement is, like, like, it looks 
good, and then Uncanny Valley comes in and sort of like punches you in the face. Yeah, so there's like, something that takes I'm you out of these games. You know? Yeah, hopefully, well, it seems like they'll have plenty of time to fix any of these problems. Oh yeah. I just love that this is a like this is a thing where it's like here's how you use an ability during a battle scene. The why button? I guess Noctis can like summon his thing. Is he summons weapons like out of thin air and can like hit people with them whenever you do with weapons. So like that sounds cool. <laughs> whatever you do. Hit, with whatever you do. With whatever weapons. slash shoot. That sounds bludgeon. cool. Um, I wonder if I'm I'm I want to take bets with people how much of the game takes place in the car, how long you're in the car. Yeah. You know, at, at one point in the game, like it's supposed to break down and you have to like go do jobs or something to get money to fix it is like the premise. But I want to know how much of that game is like bro trip. Yeah, it would be. It, I mean, that's <laughs> that was kind of. The, I mean, from that trailer, that was the vibe I got from it, which was dudes in a car. Yeah, like. It, I, I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I know people were excited about that trailer, and I respect that. I saw that trailer, you know, when I was at, in, at Square Enix in Japan, and I was like, "Like, what the hell is this? Like, yeah, I'm like, what? Like, what is? What is this game? It's I don't different. understand. It certainly is, and that's why. And that's why we were talking before we came on, and, I, and Greg and I had said the same thing. Where like, my expectations for it are just. Oh, the mailman's here. My expectations for it are just <laughs> zero. You know, okay. and like, anything that's good out of it will just surprise me pleasantly, and then hopefully I'm stoked when I play it, okay. and that's a better feeling than the excitement I had. For something like 13 where I was really disappointed you know because I was like I really I, I, I feel like this looks good and looks fun and it was just a huge disappointment to me um, so I'd rather temper my expectations 13 now when you say you didn't like 13 do you talk about Final Fantasy 13 or do you talk about that the, the, the trilogy as a whole I never played 13 2 and 13 3 so I can't comment on them yeah. uh, and on a gameplay <laughs> level other than to say that they looked more and more disinteresting to me you know, or uninteresting to me as, as it went on but no 13 itself the game itself I just, I like the combat in it. Mm -hmm. I just, the characters and the world and the linearity, there was just a lot of problems that made it, I didn't understand how it was a Final Fantasy game. But then again, <laughs> that's a cop out because 11 and 14 are your regular Final Fantasy games too. Uh, 14's great. Have you played any of 14? No, I don't, I don't play, I don't go you, down the MMO rabbit hole. You don't? Hole. Okay. No, no. I've played, a, I've played, I play 14 sporadically on my console and I like it. I think they're doing a really good job with it. I would love to see Yoshida, who's, Naoki Yoshida, who's, directing and helming everything that's going on with 14. I'd love to see him do like 16. That'd see him do like a main numbered console game because he seems yeah. to have a good grasp of what people want to see and what they want. So I'd love to see that. That's my, if you're listening, Square. Yeah, yeah, I mean, God, can you imagine, <laughs> we'll, can you imagine when we'll get 16, Jesus. Yeah, right. They'll have to obsess over 15 for we'll five or six years first. We'll all have children. Yeah, and, and like, then. Why is Final Fantasy? We'll tell them about the, the old days of turn-based battles and. <laughs> And sprites. Uh, someone had mentioned uh, Portillo in the chat. Obviously, Greg's uh, dog, who you can see the uncanny picture over here um, of him. Uh, <laughs> but uh, and usually he goes crazy when there's someone at the door. Uh, you heard nothing because uh, Greg's gone, and so is Portillo. So he went with him. No, I think he brings him to doggy day camp or ah, whatever. Okay. Um, and so there's no Portillo, so we're free for a little while of Portillo's uh -huh. tyranny. Um, I saw this uh, um, actually. I'm gonna get rid of this because we talked about these already. Uh, are you? Let's just let's just do this, all right? I don't know. If, I don't know if you care about this stuff at all. I do. Um, it's Cal Drogo as Aquaman, yes. the superior superhero. Uh, this is. Uh, we make fun of Aquaman sometimes on here. Uh, so I. Awesome. Uh, Dave Tack over at Polygon said uh, wrote I love a story. Dave this Tack. is this is Aquaman, and he looks badass. Um, and. Look at that. Uh, he, yeah, so here's here's who's playing. Uh, he might look familiar to you if you are a uh, Game of Thrones fan. Uh, it says, poor Aquaman. He's always been the DC Comics superhero everyone picks on. But it's not like he got to choose his superpowers. Plus, he's the king of Atlantis, and that's not nothing. That's a good point. This is awesome. Like, this looks awesome. So who is this? So I don't even know, who, like, who is this actor? What is his name? Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa. And so he's... I actually got to say, like, this is... <sighs> That's hot. That's I, yeah. awesome. Yeah, I mean, this is a, this is not the Aquaman I expected to see. No. This looks way cooler than a lot of uh, superheroes. Um, yeah. So it seems like they're taking a darker, more organic vibe. A gritty uh, take. Yeah, gritty take on Aquaman. Aquaman. Yeah, I like that. Like I like how his he has armor, gauntlets, shoulder pads, all through, also these kind of like tribal tattoos. Pretty cool. Are those tattoos, or is that like a? I thought that was a suit. Are it those looks, tattoos? I think it's supposed to be like tattoos. Oh my god! Like, look like at his some, pecs. Some black ink. Ooh. Damn, um, that looks awesome. Yeah, so he looks he looks pretty cool. I'm, I'm curious, you know, uh, let's go into the chat here. Guys, you tell me, uh, guys and gals out there, what what do you think of this? Because um, it seems like people are pretty positive about yeah. it. I mean, people are making fun of it a little bit about because, you know, he just looks like his character in Game of Thrones, I well, guess. Yeah. I feel like people were expecting possibly goofy Aquaman because that's all we've known up to this point. But now we have 
Cal Drogo Aquaman. Look look at the, the underbrow. Look at those eyebrows, the beard. Like, this is awesome. Yeah, it's a great picture. Damn. So do you have yeah. any context into what Unite the Seven means? Because I don't even know no. what the hell that means. No, I so I uh, I'm very late to the comics bandwagon. I had I went through this whole thing last year. I don't really care about Marvel movies. I can't get into them. I can't get into the characters. I can't get into the world. And um, last year, I had a bunch of people via Twitter and whatnot like recommend me, like give me something to read and if it's something that will get me into Marvel. And I read a whole bunch of stuff. I took everyone's suggestions. I spent too much money on Comixology, and I couldn't get into it. However, I am I am a big DC Comics fan, but I haven't been up with it recently, so I don't know what this means exactly. I'm a Batman person. If you can be a Batman person, I, I, Batman's the o- Batman. literally the only superhero I I, uh, I care about. So prefer I prefer Batman. I uh, yeah, no, Batman's awesome. My dad, my dad was big on Batman, and my dad had my dad had a lot of uh, had a lot of. I guess control over what I was exposed to when I was younger and I was at home. Like my dad used to be a uh, used to be a musician, like still a musician, but he used to play in bands. So when he was home on weekends, I would just me and my five year old self. I'd park on the couch with my dad and we'd watch like the old Batman movies. I saw Indiana Jones and James Bond and probably saw a lot of sexual content a four and five year old probably shouldn't have seen. Um, but no, like so I was exposed to this stuff early, so it sort of stuck with me. But right this on. is awesome. Yeah, this is cool. I mean, let's take just one more look at it because. <laughs> Uh, so some people are saying unite the seven, the seven C's. Is there seven members of of uh, um, of like a specific group or whatever that they're talking about? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Justice League, I guess. I don't really know anything about comics other than to say that without Greg here, we are at a, at a significant deficit. Even though uh, Greg, I don't think gives a flying fuck about Aquaman. <laughs> um, but I wanted to show this off to people and have a little bit of diversity. We get away from the games just a little bit because there's not too much movie or TV news right now other than the fact that we can watch. If you guys want to watch, we can watch that Mad Men trailer again if you want. Um, I wouldn't mind I'm that. Mad Men. Um, yeah, so this is... Now, I, all right, so you're a Batman fan, and this brings I'm up... I'm a Batman it, fan. Uh, this yeah. brings up... I, 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 don't, I don't want to be disingenuous and say that I'm, uh, uh, that I'm a Batman fan, like a hardcore fan, but I like Batman. I like Batman. How do you feel about those Christopher Nolan movies? And and on a scale of one to ten, how awesome was Bane in in the final movie? Bane made that movie. Yeah. Like Bane made that movie. Yes. Um, yeah. No. Like I. So I thought the first movie was like, it was like yeah. Like I enjoyed it. It was a good movie. I didn't really like the second one. The third one was just Bane. It was the Bane show for me. I. That was the most interesting part about that movie was Bane. Um, I thought they were they were very bombastic. They were very Christopher Nolan. I feel like in some way those movies might have missed the soul of Batman. And I'm stupidly excited to have Ben Affleck playing Batman because he can play anything. That man can play mm-hmm. anything. Did you see Gone Girl? Yes, I did. I just saw it a few weeks ago. Ama- Batman is Batman. Yeah, it ama- what a great film. <laughs> I know. It's what so a good. great film. It's, the ending I didn't like too much, but the, 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 the ride was a lot of fun. Did you read the book? Uh, no. I no. just finished I finished the book. I hadn't seen the movie. So Mitch watched the movie first, and then I read the book first, and then he watched the movie again with me, and it's very interesting to see how that... how like I think I like the book better, mm-hmm. but, that, but, that, but that's the guy playing Batman. I don't know. Yeah. I'm really excited about that. No, it's, it, it is interesting. Yeah, he, he's definitely got a dark side now. You guys should d- definitely check out that movie if you guys haven't seen uh, Gone Girl. Really... My girlfriend kind of had to twist my arm a little bit for me to see it. I wasn't, like, super excited about it. <laughs> Greg had bought it on Amazon, and, and we, so we could have just watched it whenever. And then eventually I was like, fine, we'll watch it. And I was like, I was glad I did. Um, okay. Really, really awesome. Uh, but some people are, some people think it's funny. Just because I, I have a total obsession with Bane. We even have a little Bane, Bane's Bane awesome. emojis here, as you can see. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, he's, <laughs> he's like, my favorite. Um, and Greg thinks I'm just saying it to piss him off. And I guess I kind of am a little bit. Poor Greg. We'll have, we can have our Bane love hour here without Greg. All right, let's get into the sad news. Sad news. We put it off enough. Oh, God, no, uh, no. Sato over at Silicon Arrow writes a story that was breaking last night. Uh, Triace bought out by mobile company Nepro Japan. <sighs> uh, the story says, earlier today, mobile company Nepro Japan announced their acquisition of Star Ocean developers, Triace. Nepro Japan are a company that focuses on mobile no. games, mainly on its sales business, along with mobile game development, staffing, and contracting for mobile shops. No. Lately, they've been looking <laughs> to strengthen their mobile game business, which resulted in their acquisition of Trias as a new subsidiary. No. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so angry. I'm sad. I mean, good for uh, Nepro. Yeah, good, yeah. good Good for you, Nepro, but I'm sad because Triace is Star Ocean. Triace made one of my favorite Japanese role-playing games of all time, uh, Valkyrie Profile, mm-hmm. and it was published by Enix, like... 
we're we're not going to get those anymore because they're all going to be on mobile. So all of that hope is sort of it is gone. a shame. It is a shame. Right. And this this is something we were talking about earlier too with with. You know, before we started, um, again, it's just nice to have someone I can speak to with, about Japanese games that, you know, that that has can, the feels that care that cares about them. Um, Trius was one of the last studios I think there, um, and really one of the last groups that was doing I think good work yeah. in that, like really good work in that genre. And I'm not saying that it's rare to get a good game out of Japan. It's certainly not. I'm just saying that we've really lowered our expectations and lowered our uh, our our expectations of quality, I guess, out of Japan. And yeah. like a lot of people are like, oh, JRPGs are fine. Look at all of these games that scored 35 on Metacritic. And I'm like, who gives a shit? Like, yeah. there there are, you know, Star Ocean was a, is a long-running and very popular series. Um, and then you see, you know, you see other guys, like we've talked about Spike Chunsoft and a few others, and obviously Atlas' internal team and a few other, you know, uh, Tails, Tails team. Mm -hmm. um, but this is like kind of a falling domino of studios, even that are respected in the traditional space, going to the mobile space in Japan, yeah. because that's where their players are. Um, and so I'm interested to see, what's disappointing about the story, if we go back to it, just reading it again, is that they, Nepro Japan focuses on mobile games. And maybe you would think that the acquisition of a studio like Triace would be like, okay, they want to get into the traditional space, but it seems like it's the exact opposite, yeah. that they want to use Triace's talents on the platform they're already on. Um, I, and that's what's sad about it. So I understand why you're so upset. I, de I definitely understand it very much. I'm deeply upset because like that kind of news is scary to me because we already have Square putting a lot of money into making things like Final Fantasy Record Keeper and All the Bravest and putting a lot of a lot of time into making these mobile Final Fantasy experiences when I think what we really need is like another tactics or something mm -hmm. like that. Like go back, bring us back to the TV, bring us back to console, handhelds. Um, so that plus this and just everything else sort of I don't know. I'm scared because I'm not a. Mo I don't know. Are you a mobile? Do you play oh my God, no. games on your phone? No. I don't. Like I don't I'm very. Ha I'm very. I am very <laughs> resistant to it. I won't do it. Like yeah. The last mobile game I played was Plants vs Zombies Two um, <laughs> because I love Plants vs Zombies, but just bring it to Vita and I'll give you like forty dollars. I don't care. You know, yeah. like like I just don't. I, no, I don't, it's not for me. My phone is for phone r ringing and calls. Like it's not for games. I don't know. I don't like playing games on my phone. When I want to play a game, I want a screen. I want to be able to see mm. things. I want to be able to play with it. Yeah, buttons. Um, I want buttons. Sticks. Yeah. Like, I played, um, the last game I played in here was actually Terra Battle, which I think is actually Miss Walker's uh, here in Obasaka Gucci's thing. I like Terra Battle, but I prefer to play it on an iPad because you can see what's going on. I have this stupid little iPhone 5. Um, so, I don't know, that scares me. I want more console experiences. That makes me sad. I don't want JRPGs. I don't want people to think JRPG phone game. Right, no. Like, I don't want that to happen. Me neither. What I think is so strange is that you know, Greg and I were discussing earlier this week about the, the strengthening of the console market globally, um, about the expectations that PlayStation 4 might be on a trajectory similar to PS2's, um, mm -hmm. which is incredible. We, we read a story yesterday on Colin and Greg Live uh, to that effect that they expect uh, a, a group uh, uh, did a study expecting that PS4 might hit something like 80 million units by 2019. I believe it. Um, and showed some charts and some interesting numbers uh, to, to that effect, and that even Xbox One will be like 50 or 60, which is still you know very strong showing. Um, and it's funny that that's happening, that, that that traditional space is kind of strengthening, but it's doing it without the 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 home base of traditional gaming from yeah. the past, which is Japan. Like er everything's really diverging away from each other in those two in those two regions, and it's it's kind of sad because our, our for people our age, the game gaming's heritage is in Japan, mm -hmm. and um, it's changing rapidly there. And whenever you go there, you you live there, so you know. Um, you know, and I've been there a couple times where it's like you're on the train or whatever, and you would expect to see people play 3DS, and you do, and you expect to see people play Vita, and you they're do, but they're on their phones, and it's just it's awful. And they're not on the phones the way we're on I'm our sad. phones, where we're on Twitter, we're playing like Candy Crush. They're on their phone playing like some deep and interesting games, but it's just that culture really has taken yeah. to the mobile market, and it's just something we have to accept, unfortunately. Uh, no, let's fight against it. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it either. I don't like it either. <laughs> Um, no. Vita's still kicking along in 3DS over there, though, so um, yeah. Vita's doing actually pretty well over there. Uh, Kumail uh, tipped us in. Have a, a lovely looking guys, a weekend, guys. Thank you for this whole week. You're very welcome, and thank you for joining Aww. us. We appreciate it. And I'm sorry I'm not more engaged with the comments. I know a lot of you guys are subscribing or resubscribing. I appreciate that. It's a lot for me to kind of handle. I, I have a lot more. He's doing a, a great job. Right I have now, more of appreciation. I appreciate that. <laughs> I have a greater appreciation for what Greg does here because I don't have to worry about this shit. And then that lets me worry about the stories and the chat itself. Yeah. So I'm juggling a few things here, and I do appreciate your guys' You're patience. Doing great. Like that. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, let's go back to your home, home site of uh, GameSpot. Uh, hey, Zorin this, again. Uh, she wrote a uh, free month of Xbox Live Gold for Halo Master Chief Collection players. Uh, this is a, a make good, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess people got a message to the effect, as seen here, 
Uh, as a token of our appreciation for your continued support of Halo the Master Chief Collection, we have applied a free one month extension to your Xbox Live Gold membership. No further action is required. Game on. Um, and the story briefly reads, Microsoft has begun rolling out a free month subscription to Xbox Live Gold for users who own Halo the Master Chief Collection. The rollout is in response to matchmaking issues faced by players when the game was first released in November last year. The issues continued in subsequent patches, which Xbox boss Phil Spencer called disappointing. Yeah. Spencer apologized for the matchmaking problems and stated that developer 343 Industries was 100% committed to fixing them. Yesterday, the studio revealed that the latest update was nearly ready for launch after going through the final stages of testing. According to 343 Industries, the update will, quote, improve stability, matchmaking, the party, and invite systems, and more. Um, so this is a nice make good. Uh, I think this is a nice token of appreciation, as it mm -hmm. were. Um, this this raises a bigger question for me, though. Does this, you know, I'm not a Halo fan, um, but just on the periphery, this makes me worried about the next Halo game, yeah. which is going to be much more popular, I suspect, than Master Chief Collection. Yeah, I don't know what, I don't, maybe I'm just, I just, like, have forgotten what things were like before the past two years happened, but it seems like online games are launching now with, like, more problems than ever oh yeah uh, it's I, I feel I, like it's i feel like it's more common to have a game launch with problems than it is with to have to not have problems yeah i can't i can't think of a launch i think it like started with sim city is the one the far back one that mm -hmm. i remember and then it was you know destiny had some issues and then this has issues gta online had issues or something like what's happening <laughs> what's going on it is really Guys. <laughs> it is really strange in the sense that um even, yeah, even like Advanced Warfare or The Crew, like games from more established oh publishers mm -hmm. really had problems initially that they were able to iron out, but... Drive Club. A Drive Club is like, oh my, like... Mm. What a what an interesting, you know, <laughs> as someone, you're, you're similar to me in that you like to tell stories and like to, to do long form articles and really deep dive. And I think figuring out what happened at Evolution is really going to be one of the great questions in this industry yeah. for the next couple of years. Someone will figure it out. Um, how a game that was introduced at the PS4 event in, 20, in February 2013 that was supposed to be a launch game was delayed by one year at the last wow. minute and then still didn't work. Something happened with that game. Something fundamentally was broken about yeah. that game that they could not fix. And it's fascinating. Um, but it seems like I understand why gamers out there are upset about this. You know, about, yeah. about this kind of thing. You pay good money for these games and you expect them to work. Yeah, and people pay, people pay the money on day one because they want to play it day one. They mm -hmm. want to put in Halo Master Chief Collection and immediately jump when you know four months later they are still having problems with this like i would be upset i mean i didn't buy it and i don't play halo online but i imagine people for people that don't spend a lot of money on games in a year that don't play as many games that maybe only do this like i have friends that um only play halo and they get it because they can play it with their friends and like this is i imagine this is devastating for them yes yeah, so, it, uh, it does suck and, and we but we do see games you know as alluded to like destiny mm -hmm. that have Millions of people playing across all sorts of platforms that, that and it seems to work, you know, like in the game works. and the and the game works. So this is the thing that really bums me out is that some developers seem to be making a lot of excuses for the the, the state of their games and a lot of insinuations yeah. that it's hard to test the game uh, and server and, and server stress and stuff like that in a closed environment. And I say that that's probably bullshit because uh, yeah. uh, because a game uh, we don't make games. I don't pretend to understand the technical aspects and ramifications of making a game. But when a game like Destiny, which is more popular than all of your games, works yeah. fine with a much bigger load than your games are getting, um, it either see, it seems to me that there is a possibility to have it work fine and to test it and to make sure everything's good for the end user. Yeah. Um, and I'm sick of hearing those kinds of excuses. If your game can't be tested, maybe you shouldn't fucking make it. You right, know? or like test it. Uh, I agree with that, but also maybe like be more upfront about it. I don't know how closely you've been paying attention to the Homeworld Remastered news, but they are launching it next week with uh, the online multiplayer but they're calling it a multiplayer beta because they're actually going to test it live, see how many people come in, what people are doing, and then balance it as people start playing it instead of like testing it internally. Like they're gauging interest and seeing what needs to be there. And they're being upfront about it, which is which I think is, you know, pretty pretty great, mm -hmm. but I feel like maybe if more publishers were upfront being like, "Hey, we don't know what's going to happen here. This is going to be a testing phase, like jump in and help or whatever. I think maybe people would be a little less angry. But at the same time, I do agree with you. If you can't make it work, don't make it. Or just don't do it. Yeah, exactly. And and, and people's patience with this is going to start to wane very quickly. And I think it's gone already. It, it, I think it's going. And I think what you're going to see are big games come out that people do not trust, you know, in the next year or so yeah. that um, 
games start to bomb. I mean, like, why why would you trust that the game's going to work? Who, who's proving it to you? This is why you have to speak with your wallet and really remember the studios that did right by you and the studios and the publishers that didn't. Um, what's coming good. out? recently like what's coming out in the next couple months that's online bloodborne has the online right yeah online bloodborne there. i'm sure bloodborne will be, bloodborne fine. be fine um uh although you know who knows um deep down we were just talking about it that's supposed to be an online experience yeah the one i'm interested in although it's later this year is the division oh, be, be, oh be, God, i forgot about that game because too. of the nature of you know oh. because of the nature of the online uh component of that game which is deep um and important to the game but also because it's a Ubisoft game. Yeah. Um, and there just doesn't seem to be the quality control there that they once had. Um, yeah. On Although I did kind of like playing Unity with the bugs because it was very humorous and entertaining for me to talk to someone and then their face is gone. Yeah, that, that, that was fun. Those <laughs> pictures that were going around, oh, just good. of that one, especially that one picture, just the face. Were they, was, were they, they're kissing and it's like yeah. the eyeballs and the lips. Oh, it's so good. But I love, there was one picture of like a guy, you know, with his like his nice tricorner hat on or whatever and no face and it just, someone just wrote underneath like my lady or something like that. Lady. Like, you know, like, like, like he was talking like... You got Dino another tip. Debonair. Oh, 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 dear. Also, unsung story. Yeah, have you? Did you? I'm a backer for this. Have you, have you seen unsung story? I don't think so. Um, unsung unsung story is a spiritual success the, the, the spiritual successor to Final Fantasy Tactics, and it's uh, got a lot of former tactics um, former tactics uh, staff members involved actually. Well, here it is. It, this it was a Kickstarter out, game. It was funded. La it was funded last year, so it's only been about a year. Um, I don't know when exactly they're planning to deliver, but it looks really cool. So this is a this is going to be a turn-based tactical game, close-based tactics. Yeah. Um, the last I heard, there was a I don't know if it's this or Project Phoenix, um, which is another one. Um, there's a mobile component, oh, but I don't think this is a mobile game. Cool. Is it a mobile game? God, I hope not. Oh my God! I just had a moment. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. There's got to be platforms here. Some of these, I've noticed some Kickstarters don't say anything about their platform until it's like a note at the bottom, and it's like, "What's this coming to?" And it'll be like, "Yeah, they're like burying, the, they're like burying the lead here." Yeah, goal, burying the lead. Actions. Project goals. Additional. Uh, Wait. Well, we're like we both lean at the like, same what time. What? Why does it? Is that a mobile game? Oh, PC Mac Linux is what I see first. Is. Now, okay, so 7th uh, Rim 1 says, Unsung Story, now only mobile game. Mobile is an option. Okay, well, if we go good. To the, if we go to the top, we'll do what's most important. You click, you do Control F, and you go Vita. And then we see what it says. <laughs> when stretching was on my players, are able to choose the platform. So, so PS Vita, PS4, Nintendo 3DS. I think it, didn't it hit those goals? It says, we have her, also heard your request for a console release, and so after much consideration, we have added development for the PS4 to our stretch goal list. But did it hit the stretch goals? PS4, is this an important question. I don't know. Oh my. I don't know. I don't. I'm. Uh, I, tell it. What, what is the. Uh, I mean, I will play this game, but I'll be sad. It's on a. I don't know. We'll find out. We're it, so elitist about our Japanese role playing games. I know. Well, whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I want my V to get, have games. Lots of games. Um, there are a few more things I want to go through. Yeah. Actually, we're talking about Kickstarter, so this is actually another kind Perfect. of think piece for us. This one's also from Jason Schreier at Kotaku. Jason's um, like. Jason pounds the pavement. Yeah, he, he really does. He really Good does. Good job. Um, and. Uh, We've talked a lot about Kickstarter in the past on this show and also on our other shows in, in our past lab. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not a huge fan of Kickstarter. Um, and why I like something like Patreon is because it is more of a subscription model that lets you get in or get out. Like you get something immediately and then if you don't like it, you just get out. As opposed to Kickstarter yeah. where it's like we promise you an end result, kind of an end thing that might, may or may not happen. And you really don't have a chance to rectify the situation. Um, and with all the news, I guess with Molyneux especially and his Kickstarter game, um, and then, uh, oh God, go to yeah, and then, and then all of this, uh, other kind of Kickstarter drama, Jason has, um, compiled 12 successful Kickstarters that never delivered. I never heard of this one. Aura Tactics? Aura Tactics earned, yeah, so the fun, it was funded this date and it was delivered, it was supposed to be delivered in May 2012. Um, oh boy. so LA Game Space. <gasps> the LA Game Space. I completely forgot about this, but I remember it was a huge deal. Um, That's sad. <coughs> And these guys did respond to Kotaku and said the launch of our permanent space has been delayed. Hmm. Code Hero. Yeah. This one, you've heard about this one, right? This I don't big know. one? I don't think so. This, uh, there was a big, there's been a lot of back and forth with this guy, and I think Jason actually wrote all the stories connected to him chasing him down. Um, this made a ton of money, and he, of course, sort of, I guess, took the money and was just gone. Like, he's not responding to emails or anything. Oh, yeah, so this was the game that was supposed to teach you how to, to be a yeah. coder and stuff like that. It was a nice idea. Um, yeah, it's. 
uh, this is you know a, a, a mild amount of money, but again, not you know. So these are smaller, smaller funded games. Seventy eight thousand is quite a bit of money. Moonrift, yeah. So some of these games are smaller. I mean, this is a lot. Yog of money. Ventures. That's the other one, the really awful one, that had a bunch of drama. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I don't know. I just I wanted to bring this up to talk to you because I'm not sure how you oh. feel about. Do you remember the Stomping Land? Oh God! So did you get to play the Stomping Land while it was on early access? No. It was super awesome. You were a dinosaur. You got to do dinosaur things. Oh, so this is the one that was most recently. Yeah. So th we actually talked about this one this week. I remember this uh, Alex Pandora. Yeah. So yeah, he apparently just uh, absconded disappeared. or disappeared or hasn't talked to anyone. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to bring this up because specifically because I'm curious how you feel about Kickstarter being used for games because there are there are stories of success as I've said oh, yeah. in the past. Um, even though I've been against it, I've never funded anything from Kickstarter. There have been great games, including my favorite game of last year, which is Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight. Had, had, had come from... I was just going to bring up Shovel Knight. Had come yeah. from this. And obviously, Mighty Number no. 9, which is my most anticipated game, is also a, a product of Kickstarter, and I did not fund either of those games, but, um, <laughs> you know, gladly pay with the end for the game. Yeah. Um, but how do you feel about, about Kickstarter generally? Do you think that it's kind of run its course or with, with game development? or? So, I think... So, for the past couple of years, we've seen some, like, genuinely... Like, genuinely good products. Like, if you see a game, like... Mighty Number no. Nine and the names attached to mm -hmm. it, and the company is attached to it. You know that like that there's no way in like hell that these people would let something like what happened with the Stomping Land or whatever happen. Like they won't let that happen. They have a reputation. They have a lot on the line. You know, um, I think Kickstarter. I think Kickstarter is becoming. I don't want to say overpopulated because so many people use use Kickstarter and has has done a lot of good things for a lot of people. Samantha Kalman, centrist, like she was able to make that game and work on other games and do what she's doing now because of Kickstarter. Um, Shovel Knight is fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, now that game's coming to every platform that exists. Um, I like that I've been able to sort of help make things like Unsung Story and Project Phoenix, like a successful Kickstarter. They're now in development. And I think it's a really good way to, for developers to gauge interest to say, hey, do you still care about us? Do you still want us to do something? And obviously, like, I think that they go into it knowing like we have to deliver. But I think so many, I don't even want to call them companies. I think so many small developers and maybe smaller groups of people are using Kickstarter in a disingenuous way. Mm. And I think that has come to the forefront of the news. And I think what's happened with Peter Molyneux has sort of discolored Kickstarter, maybe Kickstarter maybe tainted the goodwill for it. Yeah, so I think yeah. that we're getting to a point where maybe Kickstarter needs to like, I don't know, like either tighten its criteria or do something to make sure that these projects don't happen. Granted, like, yeah, as a consumer, you need to be a lot more careful if you're going on Kickstarter and not just throwing, you know, $20 bills at every project you think looks good. Right. Um, I have, I think, I've donated to quite a few Kickstarters. I think maybe I've donated to like six or seven. And I've mentioned them all, Shovel Knight and my number nine and stuff like that. But I think that we need to be more careful and I think we need to police ourselves. To police Kickstarter, yeah. If that makes sense. No, it does. It, you know? it, it is. It just. It is. You, you put it very well because I think it's one of those things that it, it is a small group of maybe unsavory people ruining it for the yeah. greater. Yeah, like two the, people you know, do a thing and then, yeah. It is what it is. I mean, uh. yeah. It's it's unfortunate. Um, and uh, yeah. try uh, Trisky thirteen says and Colin will platinum every version of Shovel Knight. Every version. You're absolutely right. I will. Those if those games don't so share a trophy good. list, I'll I'll download on PS3, PS4, and Vita, and I'll, I'll I will it's get the so three platinum. It's so good. It's a perfect. It's a perfect iteration of that genre. Yeah. It's just so like self-contained and wonderful. Definitely my favorite game of uh, of, of last year. Uh, Alexa, I saw this again. We, we were using <laughs> we're using your site a lot today. I guess it's no yeah. coincidence. This is Eddie. this is funny as hell to me. Uh, our friend Eddie over at Gamespot wrote horror scenes as Destiny player deletes stranger save files via PS4 share play. I didn't even know this was possible. Oh. It says, video captures devastating moment for one unlucky player who lost two characters close to max level. The story reads, One young Destiny player has learned a hard lesson about who to trust when using the new PlayStation 4 share play functionality. The feature, in theory at least, was designed to allow players who are struggling through an area to virtually pass the controller to a more experienced gamer to help them. But that's not how things worked out recently for one young man. Oh my man. god! The player who goes by... Cuckoo Night HD chronicles in the YouTube video below. The horror starts around 13 minutes in. How he used SharePlay to connect with a stranger named Kermit the Frog. He ex Don't ex trust Muppets. That's your <laughs> number one problem. He expected the user would help him discover a Destiny glitch that would boost his character. Instead, he walks away from his TV for some reason, no. and Kermit the Frog deletes his level 31 Warlock and his level 26 Titan, while also zapping an exotic weapon from a third character. Uh, he says, oh, quote, oh my god, no, seriously, uh, he says when discovering the weapon is gone. At first, it appears he doesn't realize his two high-level characters have been deleted, but when he does, you can hear him sobbing. Whoa. 
Even if this Destiny video proves to be a fake, it illustrates an important lesson. Don't share play with people you don't know, especially when characters you spend dozens of hours are building are at stake. I mean, this is this is it, it kind of interesting stuff. I don't know. Didn't anyone teach you about stranger danger? Yeah. I'm sorry. Cuckoo Night HD. <laughs> you don't trust... The, do not trust strangers, especially on the internet. That's horrifying. I'm not saying he deserved it, but like, holy crap. Yeah. That's... No. So about 13 minutes, he says... Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, so you gave the controller to a visitor, it Can says. Can we hear him? Does he start crying? Yeah, I want to, I'll put the volume. No. I don't, I, I'm, I'm loath to put the volume on oh because god. I don't want to, uh, so, so he's, he, now he's going in. It's a loading. Oh god, I can't watch. Yeah, so, Cuckoo Night HD, man. About to get screwed. No. Cuckoo Night, it's a oh great god. name. Select no! No! Oh my god! Why did you let this happen? <laughs> this is incredible. This is Oh my god! This is horrible! This is an incredible um It's incredible that you can do this. What what this is this is the law of unintended consequences at play. Oh my god! <laughs> no! That's awful to watch. Cuckoo Night HD! What are you doing, man? Stranger danger. Especially in Destiny. I mean, I heard that, I thought Destiny players, I don't play Destiny, but like, all my friends that talk about it are always talking about the camaraderie they find over the internet with strangers that, that they play together, but holy shit. Yeah, that's, that's a terrible thing. I want to, I want to, no. I, I don't want I know some of you guys want sound out there. You know that we have complications with that sometimes, so I'm going to not destroy your earbuds uh, oh. today. It's right. um, <laughs> uh, harrowing. Okay. Oh, sorry, Cuckoo Night HD. Cuckoo Night HD, uh... Uh, I mean, he, 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 he done screwed up. Oh, man. Uh, all right, so there's two more quick stories, and then we'll go to the comments. Actually, we have to give oh. away some stuff, too, don't we? We're giving away stuff? Yeah, we always give away stuff. Where Ooh. is... Uh, hey, Tim or Nick? Yeah. Can one of you guys come here and see if we can find where Greg put the giveaway pile for this week? Sure. Thank you. I'm going to reach back and touch this box. Oh, yeah. Yeah, hey. yeah we have our Luigi, our Shuhei Yoshida portrait. We still have the order there for our from our review, which you guys can watch our review of the order. The no order. scores. Uh, kind of funny, uh, youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Um, all right, two more things that are kind of a PSA. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll give that away next week, I think. <laughs> I don't even know what the hell we, like, what, maybe we'll have to do the giveaway on, uh, on Monday. Oh, this is exciting. Oh, oh, wait, no, here it is. Okay. Thank wow. you. All right. So we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get to that in a minute, I promise. Um, <laughs> all right. Public service announcement from Kotaku. Patrick Klepek. Widespread bug makes Dead or Alive 5 freeze on Xbox One. So this is for right. our Xbox players out there just to you know, be a little safe. So if you're playing Dead or Alive 5 last round on Xbox One and have been experiencing a steady stream of crashes, you're not alone. Many players are reporting the game's having issues, but some have apparently discovered a temporary fix while Tecmo Koei works on an official patch. That's unfortunate. All it takes is a quick search for Dead or Alive 5 crash to find a series of videos with the crash. So there's a bunch of videos here. Um, if you guys are having problems with the game, because I've been seeing this on Twitter... Uh, search for it and maybe find the story by Patrick over at Kotaku. Uh, there should be some uh, fixes for you uh, mm -hmm. while their Tecmo Koei works on the patch. So I just wanted to throw that out there in case you guys are having issues. Kind of help you out a little bit. Uh, and the final story, um, we're going to go back. Rob Crossley over at GameSpot. This is awesome. Um, he says, Sony to begin major Morpheus push with four-hour GDC session. Four hours? PlayStation 4 VR headset to be showcased to developers at March industry event, the story reads. Uh, and it reads in short, Sony will begin a concentrated publicity campaign for its Morpheus VR headset with a four-hour showcase at the Game Developer Conference in March, which is right here in San Francisco. Weeks ahead of its E3 media conference, Sony will send representatives to the Games Developers Conference in San Francisco to brief attendees on the prospects and challenges of developing virtual reality content for PlayStation 4. Confirmed already is a one-hour speaker session hosted on Wednesday, March 4th, entitled Beyond Immersion, Project Morpheus and PlayStation. And then on Thursday, a PlayStation US representative will discuss various insights into rendering for virtual reality, etc. and so on. Aww. So, uh, we're going to have, it, it, I guess it's not a huge surprise considering we saw Mor Morpheus for the first time at GDC, which was really weird last year. Because uh, you don't usually see hardware revealed and something like that. But I think they're trying to speak directly to the developers that are going to make or break this uh, piece mm -hmm. of hardware. And so expect to see more about Morpheus, I think, soon in the coming weeks. Uh, have you uh, gotten a GDC. chance to play with Project Morpheus? I have. What do um, you think? I think it's cool. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, I don't have the the technical know-how of someone like Scott Lowe or someone like that where I can see all the minor differences between mm -hmm. um, Oculus Rift and, and Morpheus. That said, I, you know... It's funny because we were talking about how we're very resistant and hesitant to play games on mobile, and we yeah. want, and, we want, and I, I, I thought I'd feel the same way about VR. Um, and then the first time I played, I played E Valkyrie at E three like three years ago, and I was like, "This is insane!" I was like, "I, I was like, this is awesome! I want this! I can do!" 
You know? Valkyrie is awesome. So um, I'm excited. Have, have you had experience with Morpheus? I did. I played Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes on it at the PlayStation Experience in December, and it was awesome. It's very clear, very comfortable. Mm. It was very comfortable. I liked it. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to see. I feel like this, you know, VR has been a promise for 25 years in gaming um, and just in entertainment generally. Um, and I hope that either Morpheus or Oculus or someone else or both or whatever find a way to make this work, to make this commercially viable, to make developers want to make games for it, because I really do think that it's something pretty special. I agree. Um, so that's all for the news today. Um, now, Alexa, here on Colin and Greg Live, or we'll call it Colin and Alexa Live today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we do a bunch of giveaways. Ooh, let's we give do away it. things every Friday. Coffee. Um, and uh, we'll pick a winner today. Uh, Tim or Nick? I might need you guys to pick a winner for me uh, out of the uh, the user group because I don't know how Greg does it. Someone gave you another tip. <laughs> um, oh yeah, so let's. Chris X Leon sa uh, says, "Really cool stream. Thought you were great on IGN. Also appreciate that you're a big hockey fan, even if it's the Islanders. Let's go Aww. Rangers. Uh, thank you so much, Chris X Leon. And of course, we want to go back to Immortalized, uh, who brought up Unsung Story um, as a spiritual successor, and uh, he gave us a tip. So we appreciate that. Thank you very much, Nick. Yes. You have insights. Insights into how to do this. Yeah, yeah. He did it on the stream a bunch of times as far as giveaways were concerned, but I, I watched him do it. I don't know how he does it. Oh no! Do you just the back end? Well, you have to have them like like. You have to start a contest, and then everyone that wants to be a part of it uh, enters in, like, exclamation mark, whatever it is. So, it I don't know. so that's not going to happen. So what I wonder, so what I wonder, <laughs> so let's do this. Tell me how you feel about this. I'll introduce everything we've give, we, we've put in the pack this week and a new item, and then on Monday we'll do the giveaway, and then we'll just do another giveaway on Friday. Sounds, Does that sound more reasonable to you? Back, yeah. Okay, so... The only legal way to do it is to do it. No, 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 I, no, I know. We, we want to do it on the up and up, obviously. So, all right, yeah. so here's the story, guys. Uh, I'm going to introduce everything we put in the pack from Monday through Thursday and then introduce something for Friday as well. But we're not going to do the giveaway until Monday because Greg's not here and we have no idea what the hell we're doing. Nope, I don't. I wish we, I could help you out. <laughs> it's, it's okay. We take we take Greg's institutional knowledge for uh, granted on the regular. Uh, my friend Kevin, uh, who's watching the show right now that I went to college with, uh, t uh, texted me and said, pick me. No, okay, Kevin. Okay, Kevin. All right, so first thing we're giving away is the View XL. This is, uh, we've, thought, we've, gone, is we've gone through this over and over again. Basically, what you do is you put in, you can put your phone in this. This is, this is not the full construction, but we have it down here in the box. But you put uh, lenses in and then your phone, and then you can watch things like in perfect clarity, like right in your face, almost like a, uh, like a cheaper Weird. VR headset. Okay. Uh, so we're going to give away that. We're going to give away, oh, Jesus Christ. We're going to give away these two comics for Iron Man, Iron Man and the Hulk. All right, cool. so we're going to do that. Comics, phone headset. What is what is this? Did we know we didn't do that yet. We have other things to give away. We have other things to give away as well. Let me see what else we have down here. Shirts. Yeah, let's throw in let's throw in one of these shirts. I'm not seeing the rest is of the that stuff that we actually put in the, the list. Greg didn't uh, Greg didn't set aside everything for me. All right, so we're gonna throw in we're gonna throw in more stuff next week too, and we'll put the rest of the stuff out there. But origin game. origin of. Uh, Origin, of course, we run uh, this very show and all of our streams on Origin's uh, Millennium Desktop and our, our awesome Origin laptops, which I'm quite enamored with, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, so we have these Eat Sleep Game and or Eat Sleep Game Repeat uh, so we shirts. Got, we, we got a call from Greg. Yeah. Oh, he's watching? He chose a winner. Oh, he did? Jungle Jim George. Jungle, Jungle Jim winner. George. All right, so, all right, yeah. so guys, news alert. <laughs> news alert. Woo, woo. Uh, Jungle Greg Jim. Spoken. Jungle yes. Jim George. Jungle Jim George? Yes. Jungle, Jim, Jungle George. Jim George, you are the winner. Greg did some secret thing. I don't know how it went, but he did it. Okay. Greg made it happen. He's he's over. He's so, I don't know where the hell Greg is, this but he's exciting. He, so you, uh, Jungle Jim George, you won uh, all these items, and there's more. I just don't know where Greg put them. So you're gonna win a whole prize pack. You win, my friend. Congratulations. Yeah, congrats. Congratulations, and we'll give away more next week. Now. Yeah. Next week I have something very special to give away, but I'm not gonna tell you what it is right now. Do I get to know? Will you tell me later? It's over there. Oh man. <laughs> you guys. Everyone watch next week. <laughs> Kevin, don't text me. That's not very nice. <laughs> all right. Let's go into the comments and talk to our people. Uh, as we all know, um, we, do some, some, we do some chat with the, with the, with the users here. Uh, and we appreciate your time, of course. And then we do sub-only chat for a little while. And then we skedaddle and we see you on Monday. 
Um, so send your questions, comments, concerns this way, and we will get into it. Uh, before we do any of that, Alexa, how was your first appearance on Colin and Greg Live? Did this, you enjoy yourself? Yes, this is awesome. Thank you for having me. I'm having a, a great Friday. Oh, I'm, I'm happy That's to hear great. that. And what's exciting, too, is that on, uh, so we're going to eat lunch. I'm going to go get, maybe we'll get some burritos or something. And then <gasps> um, <laughs> after that, we're going to, for our Patreon supporters on uh, Kind of Funny Games, we are going to record the monthly exclusive Patreon episode. Um, and the topic is going to be really, really awesome, and we're going to do it with Alexa. So yeah. um, stay tuned for that for our Patreon supporters out there. Um, and thank you, Greg. I don't know where you are in the ether. Greg, where are you? I don't Greg. see you, Greg. Uh, thank you for fixing that. Uh, we probably will need you to go into subscriber mode for us as well because I don't know how to do that either. <laughs> uh, but we're not going to do that yet. Um, and a lot of people are, are saying, great job. Uh, you're doing, you did a great job. Uh, so thank we do appreciate that. Uh, she was very awesome. Great to fill in. And a different kind of vibe than Greg. <laughs> loud and boisterous Greg. I was loud a couple times. I got really upset with that Destiny video. You were it upset up, with it. It upset me to watch. You, you were upset I'm sorry, Cuckoo yeah. Night HD. There's anything we can do. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Street Folds 5 says, uh, Colin, could you recommend some books that are political in nature like Bioshock? Um, hmm. did you, first of all, are you a Bioshock fan? Oh, yes, yeah. I'm a Bioshock fan. Oh, yeah. I think the I think the answer to that is somewhat obvious. I think that if you want to read something that's like Bioshock, you read Ayn Rand. So, um, you know, and I love Ayn Rand. I know a lot of people know that. Some people hate that about me, but uh, Atlas Shrugged is, I think, the book you should. Atlas read. Shrugged is an excellent book. I feel like you can't you can't call yourself a complete human being if you don't finish Atlas Shrugged mm -hmm. before you pass. It's very long. This earth. It's very long. It's worth it. It's very good. Um, Daster says, uh, Colin, now are you going to admit that Greg is the unsung hero? So this is a little bit of a joke. Greg sometimes calls himself the unsung hero, even though he gets all of the credit and all of the attention. <laughs> but today, so, yeah. I'm going to let you be the unsung hero, Greg. If you're still watching, <laughs> we appreciate uh, all of the work you've been doing for us. You've been doing a good job. Thank I think you. have done a great job. Thank you. I'm doing the best I can. I'm, when I host a show, like when we used to do Podcast Beyond and I would host it when Greg was gone, it always was different. It was just a different show. Maybe not as good, but... <laughs> it was what much like much like the order 1886. It just is. Oh God, are we gonna are we talking about that no, now? No, I really don't want to talk. Okay, about we're it. not gonna talk about the order. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, this is an interesting question. King of Chaos asks, when do you think Gorilla will unveil their open world RPG? So for I people, don't know. so for people out there, it's been long rumored and unsubstantiated that Gorilla Games, or the the Sony owned studio in the Netherlands that does Killzone, is working on an open world role playing game for PlayStation Four. Haven't they been? I feel like at some point they said something. Wasn't it last year? They were like, and our new IP. Or yes, it was longer than that. It was year. Greg and I were talking about that. I think it was at GDC in like 2012 when they said like you have we're working on a Killzone yeah. game and we're also working on something else. So we know they're working on something else, hmm. but a lot of people think that it is, and the rumors you know floating around NeoGaf or whatever say it's a role playing game. Um, hmm. And who the hell knows? When do I think it's going to be revealed? I think it's time for Gorilla to go soon. I think that um, Shadowfall was a launch game. Obviously, a different team was probably working on that. I think that maybe we see it at E3. Um, Maybe. But, That'd be nice. But who knows? I'd like to see them do something else. I think that studio yeah. is really talented, um, especially with the aesthetics, and I think that they just put themselves in this hole where they just are the Killzone studio. And I think yeah. that that's not what they want to be. Killzone's it's not going to be a them. thing. It's time for them to do something else. They um, can do it. They can. They absolutely can do it. A lot of people saying uh, more nice things uh, about you, Alexa, no. uh, doing a nice job. Oh, so uh, Choco's Pam... Choco Pam M 95. I think I said that right. Choco uh, Alexa, what is your favorite game? <gasps> oh, God. Mm, okay, so in the past couple of years, I, can I say two? Because I have two mm, that are very... Yes. Okay. The two games that I can play over and over and over and not get bored are Final Fantasy VI and Valkyrie Profile. And I understand that Valkyrie Profile is a very weird choice. Because it's not... It's It, it was a weird game. Mm -hmm. It had a weird story and a weird it system. Is a weird and this draconian pacing that made it really, really uh, tough to slog through sometimes. But those two games are my absolute favorite. I think Final Fantasy VI is a great example of a game that um, is a great example of mechanics bouncing off the narrative. I thought the narrative was great. I liked that it sort of, the game had those two parts without spoiling it for anyone who has not played it. Um, every character felt like a real human. Uh, the world felt lived in. And I felt that every move I made, whether it was choosing lyrics in the opera or just, you know, taking on ultras, I felt it was meaningful. Like, that game holds a lot of meaning for mm -hmm. me. So let's go with six. Final Fantasy six. Yeah, Final Fantasy oh, is an extraordinary choice, and I think that it's it's in my top five, for sure, games of all time. I think that the only role-playing game I like more than it is Wild Arms. And, uh, I miss a, Wild Arms. Yeah, the first Wild Arms on PS1, I think, is an extraordinary game. But it's up there with Final I mean, Final Fantasy six is just... 
it's special. That's a special game, you know, and mm -hmm. they're never going to beat it. And no. it's, it's, I don't think it is nostalgia. I don't, I really don't. I think games like four and six are just timeless, classic, character driven, yeah. story driven games that didn't need to rely on pretty graphics or spectacular right. combat systems to yeah. hide the blemishes in the game because there are no fucking blemishes in Final Fantasy VI. No, there aren't. And I know that people are very, like, people are pounding for a Final Fantasy VII HD, like a mm. full remake, but like, like if, if they announced tomorrow that they were completely remaking Final Fantasy VI for PlayStation 4, I don't know that I'd be happy about it. Because I think it's just perfect the way it is. Like, I wouldn't want to pick it apart and, like, redo it, you know? Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm coming around more to that. I think that if they did it, they could make a lot of money. But I also think that they, they're going to disappoint people and maybe it's, it's a lot of pressure. And I, I also yeah. think it's not inspiring for the teams to... You go to your yeah. team and you're like, hey, guys, we're not going to make our own game. We have to make remake this game that everyone loves. We're never going to be able to do it right, and, and so let's spend the next three years doing that anyway. You know, yeah. I, I think that there's there, something to be said about that. That's yeah. why, like, I think that that's why at the PSX with Final Fantasy VII on PS4, it's just like, just fucking leave this alone. You oh. know, like, here it is. You oh know what I mean? God. It was a great troll. It was one of the great trolls of all time. You know, that but was... it was it was unintentional. <laughs> I have no idea what they were thinking. Because when that happened, because I was there, and you, and you were there, and we were, you know, I was in the audience, and that logo came up, and I'm like... Well, I was like, are they going yeah, we to like, like, no. do it? And then, so what went through my mind, as we talked about the, the past... The trailer, the trailer, the yeah. trailer! It's like, it's like you're waiting for the new graphics to kick in, yeah. and then nothing happens. I'm like, I'm like... <gasps> were so many things went through my mind where I saw it, and I was like, I'm like, oh shit, they're going to do it. You know, and then I was, and then, and then I was, well, when I first saw the logo, I'm like, this is really fucked up, because they're just going to say, oh, we have a... We are so proud of our legacy on PlayStation platforms, starting with Final Fantasy VII, and we're excited about Final Fantasy XV. So that didn't happen. Then the logo came up, and that trailer happened. And then, I, yeah, we were waiting and waiting, and I was like, "When are they gonna?" No, no. It's in four three. It's in And so they didn't bad. do anything. But they'll give it trophies. I'm interested to see what the trophies. That whole audience went through like the stages of mourning in that three minutes. There was there was the the like crazed energy, and then the sadness, and then the anger, mm. and then the like acceptance. Yep. And it was the just stages. awful. It was bad. Oh, God, I have PTSD from that. Sorry. It was crazy. It was just, like, emotional whiplash. Yeah, it's... it's but uh, I understand why, you know. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, DShock86, this is a, an interesting question. It says, who is your favorite protagonist in a game? I... I don't know. Like, I, I guess Mega Man is my favorite protagonist, but I don't... In terms of story, like, actual... Depth. It might might have to go to like Rudy Ruffin and Wild Arms, or again one of the many characters like Locke in Final Fantasy VI. And um, hmm. I don't know. There's there's it's a it's a tough question, you know. Especially because a lot of games we play now, you are the protagonist basically. It's just yeah. It's just a, an avatar basically. My favorite protagonist. I mean, what immediately popped into my head was Zidane from Final Fantasy IX because I think he's a very well written mm -hmm. main main character. If you're thinking of 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 JRPGs as having like the main character set and then the alpha male that's the center of the action. I just thought he was very well written and very sort of um, I, like identifiable. Like I could identify with him. Yeah, I think I think um, nine gets credit, but I think nine doesn't get enough credit because I really Correct. do think that that is it's a great game and how short a time they made it. It's especially impressive. Oh, seven, eight, nine. Even though I think it gets shit on and maybe you know it's not as good as seven and nine. They they pounded these games out really quickly. They did. And and nine I really feel like was the last I would even say the last good Final Fantasy game. And I know that people I know that people don't agree with that. I, know like so, I, I don't like ten and I know people really like ten and that's fine. Twelve we agree on. Twelve sucks. Yeah, and I will stand by that. And thirteen Fight was, with me. Thirteen was the <laughs> thirteen was just something else. Um, let's do one more question and then we'll go to subs only mode. Uh uh I gotta ask our you, Greg if you're out there, the unsung hero, Greg Miller. Uh, we will need to go into subscriber mode soon. If not, can one of our um, uh, moderators do it for us? That would be much appreciated. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting some interesting, interesting um, uh, <laughs> topics. Yeah, I'm looking at here. People are saying like, no Kratos love column. No, I hate Kratos. You know I hate Kratos. Don't fuck with me. Kratos. Um, let's but he's see. He's gonna be in Shovel Knight. He he is. Which it looks it looks cool. Him. It looks cool. Uh, someone, this is an interesting, uh, point, uh, Vin, Vin card says Commander Shepard, and that was what I was talking about in Mass Effect, Commander Shepard is really who you make him, mm -hmm. or her. Um, Thank so, you. <laughs> you know, uh, whether you're, you know, you're Femme Shep or not, or whatever, like, that really is a character you kind of mold. Yeah. I was thinking more of the character that is what it is. Is already it, complete. Yeah. Like, 
I don't know, Shadow came to mind from Final Fantasy VI. Yeah. Such a conflicted and, and weird character. Interceptor. I got a... I, 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 she passed away last year, but I got a miniature Doberman because of Interceptor. Yeah, Interceptor. Did you name it? Did you name him Interceptor? No, her name was Scarlet, but like it was, it was like a mini Interceptor. It was great. That was because my I, I thought my girlfriend really wants to get a dog, and I'm like, we get you know that that kind of dog. Yeah, that Doberman. I'm like, name I want to name it Interceptor, and I'm like, but it's such a weird name, you know, like Interceptor. Yeah, and you have this dog. No, it's great. Do it. I uh, support this. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, I mean, this is a great. This K Town 124 says favorite antagonist. I think that that's an easier thing Kefka. to answer. Yes. Duh. Yes. Like, it's so yeah, good. Kafka's awesome. And I would, just a shout out to Dr. Wiley, too. All right. <laughs> Mods, if we can go into uh, subscriber only mode, that would be awesome because I am not logged in here on this particular computer. And I don't think I can. Or maybe I am. Let's see if we can do it. No, I'm not logged in. So I need your, I need your help, uh, Mods. Uh, it's perfect. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. All right. So here is when we talk to our subscribers only. Of course, if you're not a subscriber, you can stay and hang out with us. It's not a big deal. I just We just like to give a little extra yeah. love to our subscribers <laughs> at the end of every show or every stream we do. Um, uh, so let's get right into it. Sep Sepizza says, Colin, do you think we will get a release date announcement this year for Project Morpheus? Um, do you? No. No? Do you? No. <laughs> no I, way. I remember Shuhei Yoshida saying something to the effect of, we have not even officially announced that this is going to actually come out. And I think that, you oh, know, shoot. you know, but I think, his, I think his point was saying like, we're seeing, we're, we're, we're marinating. Yeah. We want to see what the developers think. I, I'm just paraphrasing him. He didn't say exactly that, but he said something to that effect that basically like we you necessarily should make the assumption that this is yeah. going to be released. I know? think they should take their time with it. I mean, they just announced it, what, last year, maybe? Yeah, yeah it, was a, it was at GDC yeah. last year. Yeah. So it's about a year ago. Exactly. Um, Dark Lord 1003 says, Alexa, what do you think of Persona? I fucking love Persona. What? Who doesn't? I, I my first my first Persona was three, and then I went back and replayed uh, one, two, three, one, and the two twos. There's two different Persona twos, and then I've played Persona four, and I'm actually digging. I'm, I went back to Persona four Golden recently because that Persona five trailer mm. is ins insanely yeah. beautiful and just insanely wonderful. People I love Persona. I think Persona is the is the only is the only the one the one piece of modern media that nails the urban fantasy the idea of the mundane urban fantasy mm -hmm. you have you know these people struggling to connect with each other and dealing with their family life and dealing with their friendships and then also fighting this like awful thing that's like trying to like destroy the world there's a lot of anime out there that does sort of the can't be like we're teenagers but we're also trying to save the earth from mm -hmm. this awful thing but i think persona just nails that yeah yeah it uh, makes you care yeah people i mean people are just crazy about it and and i'm, I'm so excited for for alice and and so mm -hmm. appreciative of the you know, we were talking about last week when persona 5's trailer came out the crushing pressure that they must be under to deliver oh, this game yeah. Um, and you know we wish them the best on that, but uh, I know a lot of people were really anticipating that game, and some people were even mad because we, uh, on Colin and Greg Live that, that during that that specific um, that day that it was uh, the trailer came out, we spent like half the show on it. And people were like, all right, enough already. It's so good though, the menus. Um, <laughs> let's see, let's see, let's see. X Pacer X says it seems ninety percent of the Japanese games you ask these two about, they will absolutely love. That's not true. In fact, if you to be fair, we just talked about how many Japanese games are of subpar quality and very derivative. There are still special games coming out uh, of Japan, though. Whether it's Danganronpa, yeah. whether it's things from Platinum, whether it's something like Bloodborne or Dark Souls. Oh, um, Bloodborne. You know, there are special games coming out of Japan. It's definitely not the place... When we were younger, everything came out of Japan. I mean, when, when, I, was, when I was growing up with yeah. NES and SNES, it was weird to play a game that wasn't from Japan. If you were playing a game from Rare, for instance... Um, or like Battletoads or something like that. That was yeah. that was the weird game, you know, not the games that were coming out of you know Kyoto and Tokyo. That was our generation, like our Mario's and ev everything. That was just what we grew up on. I, yep, it's just a different time now. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, White Bishop asks, "How do you guys have time to play so many JRPGs when everyone is so long? How do you deal with that? Because I actually just select a few a year to play. I don't play many of them anymore." Um. I don't know. I just don't sleep very much, I guess. Um, I don't sleep very much. I'll sort of, uh, I don't know. There's definitely been nights where I come home from work at like 7 p.m. and then I blink and it's 3 a.m. and I've sunk like six or seven hours into like Nino Kuni or something. I try to, I will play a JRPG up until the point when I can't anymore. Like I will play it and whether that's, you know, three hours or the whole damn thing, like however long I feel I need to play to 
understand what it's doing and whether or not I'm willing to sink more time into it. Games like Nino Kuni, I went the whole nine yards and played the whole thing because I knew I loved it. I knew I was committed to it. Um, I forced my the only JRPG that I forced myself to finish was Lightning Returns, which came out last mm -hmm. year. And that game frustrated me. I played it in a three day sitting. I finished it at two AM. The final boss battle was infuriating, took me two hours to complete. I had my roommate and my friend watching me play. And when it was over, I just remember putting the controller down and then immediately immediately laying on the floor and just bursting into tears because I was so tired and so aggravated and so like done with it. Um, but no, like that's how I do it. I try to, I want to be able to talk about it. Right. You know? oh, I understand Without that. Without being like, I played 30 minutes. It's dumb. Like I would like to be able to have intelligent conversations with people. About no, absolutely. It. I totally understand that. I mean, um, I deal with it in the same way that I deal with my obsession with trophies, which is like, <laughs> you just, it just is what it is. But I try not to bite off more than I can chew. So, I mm -hmm. mean, like, the last role-playing game I sat down with and played for 40 hours was Tales of Exilia 2. And I, I, whenever a Tales game comes out, I make time for it, because I really fucking love that series. Do you, do you like Tales? I do. I do enjoy the Tales games. I really feel like they're doing the JRPG genre very proud over at Bandai Namco, and they're one of the few, that's one of the few series that is really worth a damn, I think, right now. Yeah. Um, and so I, I try to make time for it like that, but I try not, I, I'm not getting into the nitty gritty of like, you know, like the next JRPG I'll probably sit down and play with if it comes out soon is like Cosmic Star Heroine or something like that. Yeah. Which looks fucking awesome. Looks so good. Um, and it is, I played it at PSX. Are you going to play Type Zero? That comes out no. next month. I played Type Zero <laughs> in Tokyo in September and I was like, this is, I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm like, this game's kind of a fucking mess. Like, and, and the... The camera is screwed up in that game the to the point where weird. someone from Square came up to me. And we're like, we know we're like working on, we're fixing whatever. I'm like, it's like it whips around and like it's just crazy on, on a television screen. It's just not made for for being played like that. You know, so it's a PSP game. I played it. I played it recently. I played it in January, and I didn't have any of those camera problems. Like I actually had a very good experience. But that, that game, that's good. I hope they tightened it up. Then that game is tough. It that, is it's hard. It's a very difficult mm -hmm. game. That's what they were saying. I mean, that's the hallmark of it. I want to give it a chance when it comes out um, and give it a go because it seems like a game. It's, it's a game with a weird legacy and like kind of a, a weird like je ne sais quoi. Like, you, like, what do you say about it? It was a PSP game. We never thought we would get it. We finally yeah. got it. We thought it was going to be on Vita and then they were like, no, 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 it's on PS4 and Xbox. Like, there was a lot of conflicting yeah. emotions about, about that particular game. So um, It would have been good on the Vita, I think. I wish it, I mean, that's where it belonged, I thought, but um, everything belongs on the Vita. As I've said before, a game isn't a game until it's on the Vita. Um, let's do three more questions and then bounce out so we can eat and move on with our lives. Um, let's see, this. I hate this, this uh, like this seafoam green color. Caesar Anthony says, Colin, House of Cards next week. Uh, are, you a, are, you a, are you a House of Cards fan? So I just, I haven't watched it. Mitch, um, my boyfriend, Mitch Dyer at IGN, sat me down and made me watch all of season one and all of season two. And the first two episodes of season one, I was like, I don't really know. And then season, like the third episode, everything just clicked and I marathoned it. I am so excited for season three. Yes. I am, I am too, and I want to be disciplined about... Not thinking. Not, yeah, but I wonder if that's just <laughs> the way it has to be. You know, you know someone's going to spoil it. Something's yeah. going to happen. That's true, that's a good point. I think we might have binge plans if you would like to join our binge plans. Yeah, maybe I will. Maybe, maybe, maybe I will. That would be fantastic. Uh, Trav1784 says, Colin or Alexa, what would be the best JRPG to start with on Vita if I can only commit some time to play one? This is an interesting question to me, Alexa, because he's not limited to the limited array of JRPGs native to Vita, but can play PS1 classics. Oh, um, so this, is, this becomes a much more open-ended question, and I wonder to this, and I don't know how you feel about this, I would love to recommend Wild Arms or something like that, but I wonder if you're new to the genre, should you not jump in and play something like Final Fantasy VII? Um, I mean, the obvious answer, if we're going with stuff made for the Vita, is Persona 4 Golden. Mm -hmm. Sure, I, I mean, that's... Do you agree? I don't I, know. No, I mean, I, I, I agree. I just, I just <laughs> thought it was a, maybe a deeper question in the sense that he's not necessarily locked, not locked to, the, to Vita card or downloadable games. Like, he can play PS1 games. But, but that said, Persona 4 is the obvious answer. Um, and you can... I mean. But, but he can play this array of, you know, so it's, it's an open-ended question. Yeah, Persona's a, a, a great place to start, as, as anyone would tell you, um, and I'm sure Alexa and Greg would especially stress. Uh, but I think you, you can't go wrong with PS1 classics. No, either. you can't. You probably should actually play a PS1 classic. I want to say, if he, so he's just, like, this is it's his first one. 
he's just getting into them on the Vita. Presumably, I, I, I don't want to assume that, but it seems like he has time. He's never played one on Vita, and he only has time for one. So I don't want to assume that he's new, but maybe he is. Or, Are or you she, new? If you're new, if you're new to the genre, I would say pick up Final Fantasy VII or IX or VI um, or IV, one of those, to whet your appetite. But if you're not new, Persona 4 Golden is very, very good. Yeah, I think I think that people will. Um, yes. People will enjoy. Uh, there's a, there's a. Or tactics. Tactics. Oh, you can yeah, play tactics on the video, right? Fucking yeah, you play, play you play War of the Lions, specifically the PSP version. Play tactics. Um, <laughs> final question comes from Rufus Jeremy says, uh, "Hey, Colin, is there any chance that you guys might have some more of your game journalist friends on Colin and Greg Live in the future? Alexa's do Alexa is doing a really Thank really great you. job. I agree, she is doing a great job. And yes, of course, uh, I have open invitations open to uh, many of our friends here in the industry. And and uh, Greg uh, and I, you know, for instance, in April I'll be gone for like two weeks. Where are you going? So I'm going back home to Long Island and then to Iceland." Uh, with my girlfriend, just, ran, just randomly. That's awesome. We just got a good deal, so Everyone's we're going. going to Iceland this year. I know like three separate groups of people that are just going to Iceland. Yeah, it's just it's it's. Uh, I, I think I honestly think it has a lot to do with the fact that there's this new airline that is doing um, flights from Boston or JFK to Reykjavik for on the cheap, and so I think that people are just being able to like it's a promotional kind of thing, and I think Ooh. so people are just taking advantage. So um, you will you'll see much more. Uh, uh, I'm sure first of all Alexa will be back, and you'll see uh, others uh, as well brought into the fold because they'll have to be otherwise it'll just be the Greg show and no, no one wants that uh, or the Colin show you definitely don't want that I like the Colin show thank you this I appreciate was, this that this was great I feel like I've enriched my intelligence today thank you I appreciate you I appreciate you coming uh, and, and tearing you away from your your you know everyday job over at, at GameSpot <laughs> so let's wrap it up alright so first of all uh, we'll be back on Monday for more Colin and Greg Live and you can find us every weekday at 11 a.m. Pacific time right here Twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. Um, we'll be streaming some games next week too. Uh, I have some feelers out uh, to Sony specifically about Hell Divers and Orishika um, because I'd love to stream those games for you before they come out and I'll let you know what we find out about that um, next week. Uh, no big releases, but I expect that we'll be streaming a few games next week. Uh, I kind of want to get Evolve going um, at some point. Homeworld comes out next week. Homeworld comes out next week. We had Homeworld for a while. We just here's the problem. <laughs> Time is the problem. We that have no so fucking slow. time, <laughs> and we just have like there's just no time. You know, like like we have to figure out a better way to stream more games in the afternoon because I know that's what you guys want, and we want to do that for you. It's just so many administrative things to do when you when you own when you're there's only four of you and you're basically responsible for literally everything. It's you run out of time very quickly. You so guys we, are doing a good job. Thank you. We appreciate that, and we appreciate everyone's patience out there as well. Um, so. Uh, in the meantime, you can find uh, some new content today and from all week on youtube.com slash kindoffunny and slash kindoffunnygames. You can support us on Patreon if you want to. It's not necessary uh, if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. uh, you can follow us on Twitter uh, at kindoffunnyvids. We're also on Instagram and Facebook. We have a NeoGaf thread, a Reddit thread, and the Facebook uh, groups all run by fans if you want to find those. Uh, you can follow me in Home Taxation. You can follow Alexa at Alexa Ray C, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you can find all of Alexa's work at GameSpot as well, and you should definitely go uh, read what she uh, has going on there. And be excited. Please be excited for some future projects from her as well. Um, Alexa, thank you for joining me. I hope you had a good time today. Yes, I did. Thank you for having me. No problem. And uh, you'll see, you haven't seen The Last of Alexa on Colin and Greg Live, but you have <laughs> seen The Last of Us for this week. We'll see you on Monday. Have a great weekend. Um, and uh, now let me see here. Uh, I know some people, <laughs> some people are not uh, not crazy about the Moon Knights. Um, What's Troy? Uh, Troy, uh, oh, it's, I don't know what that, I'm afraid to even click that. I don't know what that is. Oh, that boy. could be a secret thing. Maybe. Is it like Troy Baker? Um, it probably is Troy Baker, but it's, it could be one of the Greg's things. I I know you guys want Geraldo back, and we, we gave you Geraldo to start the show, but we're going to do the Moon and Nights to end it, and then we're going to be out. So have a great weekend. Be well with your friends, family. Eat a lot of food. Play some games. Relax. <laughs> we'll see you on Monday. Au revoir. We are the Moon and Nights, and our culture is advanced beyond all that you can possibly comprehend with 100% of your brain. Oh, is that so? And what's so advanced about it? Well, for one thing, the Moon has one-third less gravity than your Earth. I don't know if you can understand that, but our vertical leap is beyond all measurement.